Hello, my name is Zach, and today we're going to walk through how to uh, make a DCP with DCP Omatic. Um, so, what a DCP is, is it stands for Digital Cinema Package. And really, it's just a format that sometimes movie theaters require. And the reason I'm needing to make one is because that myself and some friends, we made a film and we got into a festival, and that's the format they're looking for. So some places that you're able to go to to make DCPs, they will charge somewhere in the neighborhood of $400 or more, depending on the length. In our case, ours is a short film, about 11 minutes long, so it could have been cheaper. But we went uh, with the free and open source option of dcp -Omatic. So I'm going to walk you through how quickly I was able to get started with it, and hopefully that can help you get started and feel comfortable diving into all this. So this is the dcp -Omatic website. A uh, couple part portions that are most useful. Uh, certainly the download portion up here, which we'll go to in a second, and the get started portion. Starting with the get started portion, this is really all the steps I'm gonna walk us through as well. Um, where to download, um, then how to use dcp -Omatic, starting a new project, adding the video file, and actually finally sending it and encoding it at the end and what those files look like, and then also my favorite part, which is how to get multiple computers to pitch in and help make the process faster. But going to the download section, is so there's, they have uh, multiple different releases, to be honest, which is kind of cool. Um, so they've got it for Windows, they've got it for Mac, it looks like I see Ubuntu, and a bunch of other formats of Ubuntu, or of Linux that I'm not as familiar with but they exist, make sure you grab the right one for your system. And if you have computers that are gonna to work together, then it should all be on the same version, so the same release. In this case, I'm using this release right here, this 2.18.19. Um, so that means that any of the ones in this area here would be able to work together, be it Windows, Mac, or Linux. Actually, the computer that's going to be pitching in at the end will be a Linux computer, and I'm on Windows right now. So it is able to work. So in my case, I'm going to download. I have a 64-bit Windows. So I'm going to go there. Uh, we get a nice introduction from Carl, the one that made this. That's fun. Gives us a nice idea of how much uh, other things could cost to make. Um, so definitely, if you're using this and saving some money off of it, consider donating it. But ultimately, uh, if you're not ready to donate at this time, you go to let me download it. Now that we've downloaded the program, we're gonna install it, but I've already done that. So I'm just gonna start with opening it. So we're gonna start with opening DCP Omatic. So our first step in this very streamlined process is to hit new. We're gonna say our team, our project name, our film name. This is Puberty for Humans, is the name of our film. Then we're gonna go where we want it. In this case, I have a, let's see, I put it in my, this folder, didn't I? No, it's in this one. All right, in the DCP folder, and then I'm putting it just in this big folder as a whole. It's gonna make a folder for this. Important thing to remember is these DCPs are large, and this is both where the project is, is also the same place where the output's going to be. By large, I mean an 11 minute video, which is what our Puberty for Human short film was, is going to turn out, I think, close to 10 or 12 gigabytes. So about a gigabyte a minute, and that's for a 2K size. So just plan accordingly, so you don't have to move things around. Hit OK, then you're gonna have your blank area. You're gonna go into these different menus. In this case, we're adding a file. In this case, I'm already there, but this is our Puberty for Human short. So we've got that, we're opening that, it's gonna do some analysis. And again, there are a lot of options and things we can click on with this, but for the most part, we're gonna skip over most of them. I encourage you to look through them all just to be like, confirm that it at least looks right or you don't have any information telling you that you should change it. But a lot of it is stuff that either you need it or you don't. So in this case, I actually have, if you look at the video, look at the audio, um, you're able to see that ours is uh, two channel, the left and right channel, and the timing. I'm not gonna need to mess with any of those settings. So I'm really just gonna go into the DCP section. I need to make sure the content type is correct. This is currently for feature. We are short, but there's a lot of options there. Um, 
you can encrypt it. You can put like passwords and things. I did not do that. Um, the, in the case of the metadata, you can also put in details there of like maybe what your production company is or things like that, but really optional. Streamlining wise though, we're looking at are we in 2K or 4K? Even if you're not in either of those, this is what your output's going to be in because that's how DCPs work. Um, I, in our case, we went with 2K. Uh, make sure your frame rate matches the one of your project. And then you're like, great, I wanna output this. Now I'm gonna go back to jobs, make DCP. And what's amazing about this is it will let us know if we did something that might be questionable. In this case, ours says, um, let's see, we haven't set audio language. And to go to the DCT, DCP tab um, and set it there. It also says you have six channels rather than eight. That could raise an issue. So we're gonna do that. So we're gonna go to DCP. We're gonna go for, I think it said audio language, right? So we're gonna check the language box and it's currently English US, which is what I am or what, what this film is. <laughs> um, and then channels, it mentioned it wanted eight or 16. Um, so I'm gonna do eight. And so our output was stereo. Uh, the reason I'm not changing it to stereo is that one of the other pop-ups that gave me earlier today was that if it's not at least a 5.1 output, sometimes the uh, that the system doesn't like it. The system being system playing DCPs that we are destination. So even if it's blank channels, it recommended it's still doing a 5.1 output. So I click on that, go back to content, hit jobs, make DCP. And now it's like, cool, it's double doing a double check. And then I have the option to make DCP. And that is what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna notice it's starting there. So, but I wanna see its status. So I'm gonna go into, if I start typing in DCP Omatic, there's also another one that's DCP Omatic Encode Server. There's also a play thing, but I want the encode server. You don't need this on your source computer to be able to see it, to be able to have it working. But I like it because it can show me what's going on. So you're like, well, I just opened it. It's not there. It usually opens closed. So in this case down here, double click on it. That didn't work. Looks like it's the right click. Status. And you're able to see it's rolling through frames, which is cool. Doesn't change anything on your source computer. However, I'm going to open up one more menu for us, which is, let's see, feud. Oh, no. Tools. Encoding servers. So if we'll notice there, it's flagging there's two different encoding servers because what it didn't tell you guys is I already have another one open. So let me show you. So while we've had this running, the other thing I did is I booted up my other computer and I have that that I'm remoting into right now. Remoting into it is not a necessary process, just part of showing you this and being able to do it all on the same screen. So this is the other computer I have in another room. It is a super potato. It is not strong and we're gonna see that in just a second. But I have installed DCP Omatic on this as well, and I'm specifically going to open up the encode server. So, what it's doing is you'll notice it says it's starting up with four threads. My host computer, my one I'm recording on right now, has 12. This computer with four threads, it was something that I got in like 2012, and it's 2025. So, it's been a bit. But, that's what's great about this is all these computers can pitch in. Um, the only other necessary part is you do need to be on the same internet, same Wi-Fi, same uh, local connection, whatever that ends up being. So whether you're wired or Wi-Fi. And what's great is then it pitches in. It helps make this process go faster. So that's it working away at it. Again, all I need to do is open up the encode server on the same Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna minimize that. And then you'll see, so it's where the host computer here, my 12 thread computer is working on it. And together they are making it go just that little bit faster. So if you want to output with a bunch of friends, get a friends together and all hook your computers together and they can all work at it together. Alrighty, in uh, a moment for you guys or about 18 minutes for me, um, that finished encoding. So that's cool. So now it's time to look at what those files look like. So again, those are gonna go back to that folder that we wrote to. So let's bring that over. So I wrote it to Puberty for Humans was the folder that we made. Um, so I go in there. And so there are a lot of different project files for the project that we have. 
that this is your DCP right here, the one with the long and complex name. In this case, ours is 17 gigabytes. So like that just gives you an idea. Again, we're about 11 minutes long, so it's a little over a gigabyte a minute. So again, just for planning it, if you want, you could open up, be like, take a look, see what the files are there, but it's big and you need them all. So if a, a, if a, uh, if a place, a film festival is looking for you to submit your DCP, this folder is what they're looking for, that entire thing. They might ask you to send it in on a drive, you might be able to upload it online, but that's what it is. So just so you know what you're looking and potentially the file size you're trying to give them. Um, so just plan accordingly, but that's how straightforward it is to use DCP-O-Matic to output your film. Um, again, other sources might do some things that are better, but honestly, this worked great for our purposes. And now you have a rough idea of where to start, so it's not quite as scary.